Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video, we will be talking about lesson learned from Terraform and using in production. Uh, I've been using Terraform in production for about uh, three and a half year now. And yeah, let's go. So uh, let's begin. So first of all, uh, I would like to add a disclaimer. I don't think personally don't think there are anything such as best practices. Uh, there are only good practices that you can follow. So what worked for me or my company or from my experience could be could not work for you and could be different. So yeah, so it's only good practice, not best best, best practice. Sir. So let's do a quick recap. Uh, so what is Terraform? Uh, Terraform is a API driven state management tool which helps you to build infrastructure as code. So it uses uh, its own declarative language, it's called HashiCorp configuration language. And what it basically does is calls provider APIs under the hood. Uh, it uses state file to manage the desired state to convert with, con with current state of your infrastructure. And Terraform configurations are item button, which means uh, if you apply the same configuration again, nothing would happen. So yeah, Terraform is a good tool. So why use Terraform? Uh, basically, it helps you to build your infrastructure using code. Uh, you can do state management with it, with like current state versus the desired state. And also you can use the same language paradigm to create a cloud infrastructure on different, different platforms such as AWS, Azure, or GCP. Yeah. Also, good thing about Terraform is um, you don't need to specify the order of creation. Uh, suppose if you uh, if you write a code to create a VPC and EC2 instance, Terraform would automatically detect that it has to create VPC before before any instance. So, which is good. So, let's do some recap of terminologies. Uh, I'm sure you guys are already familiar with it, but yeah, Terraform provider are basically the integration with third party cloud cloud service provider like AWS or Azure. Uh, each cloud service provider, they create their own Terraform provider. Uh, so yeah, don't, don't get confused with Terraform provider and cloud service provider. So what provider in Terraform does is it provides an abstraction or it provides a resource endpoint so that your code can communicate with the cloud provider. What is a resource? A resource is a resource block are reused to create actual infrastructure using code. And it are like those are made available by your service provider using Terraform provider. Yeah. Data block are when you, if you already have a resource in uh, cloud and you want to fetch data related to that, then you would be using data block. State file, as I said again, are the heart of Terraform. Uh, everything that you create using infrastructure or code is tracked in a state file. So how do you structure your Terraform repo? Uh, there are two ways you can do it. Uh, one is like two general ways. Uh, one is mono repo and another the one is multi repo. Um, there are like advantages and disadvantages of using a uh, mono repo and multi repo, right? So the advantage of using mono repo is as like it's a single source of truth uh, and you have a consolidation as in your infrastructure as code would be on a single repo and your configuration management as code would be on a single repo like separate repo so all of your code related to infrastructure as code would be in the same repo there are cons to using mono repo as well first one being scalability uh it's it's a bit hard when you when your company grows and you only have one repo to manage your whole entire infrastructure. And there is another issue with ACL and ownership, right? Uh, which which team owns what part of the code? It's, it's difficult to manage using mono repo. If you are managing Terraform using multi repo, then there are benefits uh, such as like it is isolated, modular. You can you can implement ACL using uh, the source control. And also the blast radius is smaller. Uh, if anything goes wrong on that part of code, it would only affect the project using that infrastructure. Other than that, it would not affect anything. If you manage it properly or <laughs> build the infrastructure properly, I guess. <laughs> and the con of using multi repo is overhead. Like if you need to make a small change in one part of the code, and if the same code is used in multiple repo, then you have to go in multiple repos and make the same change. So which is uh, overhead. 
so yeah there are different pros and cons of using both of them uh, you can choose whatever works best best for you so uh, you can structure terraform report differently uh, i'll show you a couple of ways you can do it uh, first one is the flat structure uh, flat structure means everything or everything would be under the same folder uh, that is main output variable provider backend everything would be on the same the benefit of using this approach is it is good for a smaller project if you have a project and you need to uh, create infrastructure using code basically like i would recommend to use this format everything would be infrastructure as code or i sized uh, it will be see easy and simple to understand good for a smaller project and the, there are crons and drawbacks as well as you dev like different environment would be configured on under the same same terraform state you would have a single state file it's not scalable once your company starts to grow and infrastructure grows then it is hard to maintain and you would have a long long configuration file if you follow this way if if your company grows so basically yeah flat structure not good for scalability but good if you want to uh what do you call come up with a IC solution for your smart project another is modular structure based on infrastructure uh, as you can see in the picture you have our main main module which contains main backend uh, for our providers output and variables and you will have other sub modules for each infrastructure as it we see sub security groups load balancer instances and firewall and each of them would have configuration related to it so benefit of using this structure is it's modular uh, it's more drier than the flat repo flat like flat structure and and yeah there are cons of using using this structure like modular approach as well that is uh, it adds complexity the major drawback is it adds complexity and why i said the cons is local module as in if you do it this way if you do it this way all the modules for your project would be located in the repo as like specific github repo or in your source control but it is it will not be pulled from cloud so yeah uh, the other is modular structure based on service as in like think of it same as the previous one but instead of separating module as an environment we say separate module as an individual service that is you have dev and prod environment right now if i want to have a monitoring or prometheus running on my dev environment i would just add the module to build prometheus infrastructure what it would do is now it is much drier because each project needs a certain services at least right you would in each of the environment you would need monitoring logging or, or alerting services if you create service based modular service based on that structure then you don't have to create uh what do you call replicated infrastructure for both for both of the service right and also if something goes wrong with one one of the service uh your other other service would not be affected so it's a bit drier it's scalable as well it's maintainable and the when drawback is it adds a bit more complexity the other way you can structure your terraform repo is is using a configuration oriented structure basically what it means is all of the configuration of your project would be defined in config.yaml file and you would use local.tf to load that config into terraform uh, using yaml decode and and yeah same as same it, it, and all the rest of the thing is same as the, the modular structure uh, where you have modules for your infrastructure database network and you would import it as as the environment requires the benefit of using this structure is it's more drier scalable it's maintainable and also it's project driven uh, i would recommend to use this if if you are creating creating uh, infrastructure for for based on your project but not for the whole entire company it's not scalable if you want to do it organization wide wide but if you want to implement it on project project wide uh, infrastructure as code then yeah this works really well um then another drawback is uh it is a bit complex to get it right so yeah it takes a couple of tries to make it future proof i guess so which convention to follow uh the like 
before choosing any of the structuring way you could ask yourself or myself a couple of questions one is how complex would be the project it's a, if it's a simple one use the flat if it's a little bit above the sink simple but way not like it's not too big then use the modular with infrastructure based configuration if you want to do multi repo and project basis go for the third one config driven yeah so the second question is how often the configuration will of the infrastructure will change often not too often like every day who will manage the change who will apply the change sorry uh, either you're the person who writes the code will apply the change or is it done by in the cloud or by through automated uh, systems and how are environments separated uh, are you separating your environment based on branch or are you separating environment based on uh, like environment variables or what type of workspaces and also the major thing is what is the skill level of your team to use terraform they like are they beginners of uh, using terraform have they recently just recently started adopting terraform or they are, like they have been using terraform for a long time and they are complex like they are what do you call they are aware of the complex terraform operations and data manipulations so yeah based on this kind of question it will be easier for you to determine what repo structure should you follow for your project so yeah i uh, have mentioned as the, this session is related to the lesson learned uh, let's go through a couple of lesson learned of using terraform first one is uh, do not store your uh, terraform state locally try to store it in cloud anywhere uh, my first choice would be to use terraform cloud but yeah you can store it in s3 bucket or object storage any kind of object storage and i would recommend to do a occasional backup of of the state file as well because every time you run terraform even if it's in the remote remote uh, location it is being manipulated so if somebody makes a wrong change the state file in the cloud would also be changed so yeah it's it's good to do a occasional offsite backup of the state file even if it's poison control it's better uh if it, it's better to do a uh, how do you call offsite sync enable state locking if you're working with uh, other developer if there are multiple developer working on the same code it, it is good to have state locking this gives us idea who is working with terraform code at what time yeah you can achieve this using s3 bucket and dynamic db or blob stories or or can be done using terraform cloud uh, regarding nested mo module i would recommend not to go beyond a two sub module that is max like max if possible only use one sub module like or sorry only one module but if you want to go like a bit more in like modularize it even more do not go way over uh, more than two because it will introduce complexity and also it will be hassle to manage data across or share data across different modules or the other thing is you should be treating your terraform code just like any other application code that is um, you version control your code, do a format, lint, security operations, decide run security checks, write test cases, also follow a standard process, release process of releasing your Terraform code. That is what don't just write code, plan and apply. Do through a proper GitOps um, like commit, lint, uh, pull request, review, and then apply the change. You can use tools like Atlantis to help you with this, or you can do it through Terraform Cloud as well. Uh, now comes uh, kiss and dry. So kiss means uh, keep its consistency simple and stupid. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, stupid. Yeah, and and the dry is is do not repeat yourself. So yeah, it takes some time and experience to find a sweet spot between kiss and dry. Uh, occasionally, when you try to implement dry, the code speaker code becomes a bit complicated. So for those cases, it's better to write a good comment and and let people know why you implemented the code like that and one of the key thing is even though there is a command called terraform destroy is i would recommend not to use it um, if you want to delete a resource just comment out the block of code that is that is used to create that resource and run terraform plan and apply again yeah so 
delete the configuration or comment out the configuration but do not do terraform destroy terraform destroy is a very very uh, dangerous command another is um, you should be separating out uh, your environment uh, to minimize the blast radius if something goes wrong uh, do not include dev stays brought into a same same file it like it's not good to maintain it that way you can leverage terraform workspaces uh, here are the command that you can see to create or manipulate or use terraform workspace you can pass the workspace variable um, you can pass the workspace value in as part into your terraform code as well another thing is use a proper naming convention a uh, couple of things i mentioned here one is use underscore to separate out the word instead of dash because terraform uses the same convention to define resource use lower cases and also if you have a single in single resource throughout in, like if you have a single resource then you can use this to reference it as, or as a resource identifier uh, example would be internet gateway you have only one internet gateway in a vpc so yeah you can give it a give it the name of this and also use singular name this is small thing but it plays a big role when you are doing it properly and for it like it improves the readability as well so if you have resource name it says if it's a single resource use singular noun if it's a, a resource created using loop control attributes such as for each and count then it's better to use plural names also uh, one thing that i want to add here was if the resource are dependent with each other it's better to explicitly define it using depends on attribute but yeah because sometimes what terraform does is when you are destroying thing if something goes wrong and fatal and it just crashes and doesn't destroy the dependent resource and you are just left hanging with a incomplete terraform configuration like the resource running but it, uh, it like so it destroyed half of it but didn't destroy some of it so yeah it's good to mark it explicitly tell different like terraform to destroy the resource before destroying the other one another thing is variable declaration do not reinvent the wheel just use how terraform declares its resource uh, use default provided option uh, make sure you use all the options such as description name also use plural when you are using uh, when you are like outputting or when you are declaring variable which is a map or list uh, this uh, i came across this when i was working with multiple provider when you are uh, when you create a variable um, or map variable using curly braces sometimes it is sometimes it becomes a map and sometimes it becomes a object so yeah then it was hard to figure that out but but eventually i found it so the it would be good if you are declaring a variable map variable just explicitly convert it to map using to map function it will save you a lot of hassle and the other thing is outputs uh, when using output is similar to declaring variable use proper naming convention uh, if you are exporting to a list or map use plural if it's you are exporting singular attribute then use singular and if you have de like defined description as before you can use terraform uh, let me just move it here you can use terraform output to dissect the information and get more like you can get more information using terraform output command uh versions and provider always always pin your provider version because uh, cloud provider they keep on updating and changing their provider so it's better to get logged in logged in with a certain provider and update if you want to update it but yeah the change might be different it's always good to pin your versions um, you also need to know the difference between terraform import versus Terra data resource uh, when you are using terraform re resource both of them pull the resource existing from existing on the cloud but what terraform uh, import does different is it pulls in the detail and starts stacking in into your state file whereas data resource it every time you run terraform plan it, it uh, checks with the cloud provider with the latest data information about that object in the cloud which was already created in the cloud so yeah we need to know when to use terraform import and when to use data resource uh, another thing is 
try to use for each over count uh, because so if i have like i'll explain with it with examples shown here so i had an initial variable and i created the resource right it what happened goes in and creates different vpcs us west 2a us west 2b right now i added one more vpc us west 2c now when i run the same operation using loop control as count what it does is it destroys these two resources and again creates all three of them we don't want that right we already have two we only want what we only wanted to add one so using if you use count for such thing then yeah it will add three and destroy the previous two so the better way to do this would be to use forage so what forage does is it checks whether both of them are existing already exist or not and then creates a new one as you can see one to add zero to change and zero to discord you can you could use count in scenario where where all of these are completely same same thing but just the replicas where where even if you recreate all of them you wouldn't be into a big issue so yeah also know where to use locals variables and tfr uh, locals uh, are used when you want to create variables from an expression you like do not declare static variable in local if you have static variable there like you can you need to declare it's good you declare it in in variables or tf or or anywhere locals are local to that module and you can generally locals are used to build variable using expressions a tf bar you can use tf bar to pass in sensitive values to your telecom code such as api keys or secrets even if you are passing variables to tfr you need to declare it as part of the variables.tf on declaration so in such case you need to mark it as sensitive equals to true this way what it does is it doesn't displace the the variable content or variable value in as part of the standard out also one thing you need to do like remember is know your provider limitation um, each provider implement api differently so know if there are any like rape limitation for your api endpoint because at the end of the day terrify terraform is it use leverages cloud providers api under the hood and we need to know like are uh, if are there any rate limit or are are the api ip access controlled or not uh, what is the man maximum number of concurrent tries uh resource can be like con concurrent tries that Terraform can try before it considers itself as failed. Also, it's good to use Terraform tooling to help you with your development, such as uh, you can use Terraform console to debug. I use it a lot of time and it help it has helped me to uh, it has helped me to speed up my development process a lot and debug my code as well. Uh, you can use other tools like formatting, linting as well, using Terraform FMT recursive. Uh, or you can put all of these into a, a CICD tool or, or put it as part of your pre-commit as shown in the diagram. I Atlantis, it, I've been using Atlantis for long, some, some, some time and, and it has been pretty good. You can use Atlantis to do these kind of operations. Other thing is know which things to consider as mutable and immutable. Um, so you wish we should be aware like what are the things in our telephone like in our cloud provider that are likely to be changed one example i can think of is sss keys i i added ss keys i lost my laptop i need to generate a new one and i i need to update it in cloud right but if those sss keys were used when you were creating a resource and you change it then telephone will detect that change and try to recreate all the resource that used that sss key which we don't want so for such kind of thing uh we could use lifecycle meta argument with ignore changes what it does is it tells okay even if these were like attributes change do not recreate the resource it's useful to know also now uh, pro time and again provider like i had faced the issue where provider changed the change the underlying id of the resource 
or 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 the like id of the resource or they change the implementation so this causes terraform to recreate the infrastructure so we don't want that so it's better to use slug because slugs are highly unlikely to to change compared to the ids and also it's it, it increases the readability of your code as well um i've seen people uh disabling the re resource uh, refresh like terraform refreshes the state every time we do plan and apply and it's good it's a good thing to have because it checks uh what's what's running currently in your code and what's running in the cloud if like people disable it to speed up their terraform plan but i would recommend not to do that also some provider helps you to implement a um, default tag as well. Uh, similar as you can see in the diagram in AWS, you can add default tags. It's much easier when you use default tag because now when I go to cloud provider, I can see which of the resource were created by Terraform and which of the resource were created manually. Some of the myth around Terraform that I think uh, could be talked about here is, is Terraform is platform agnostic. Um, a lot of people think uh, platform agnostic means uh, you can use it to uh, like same code can be used to deploy anywhere but I think what platform agnostic means is you can use the same platform to create resource on different different providers but you can't use the same code uh, you can you, you cannot reuse the same code to build EC2 or build a server on different instances. You have to write your like different code. So, yeah. Another thing is Terraform doesn't do uh, automatic uh, re reconciliation, but it, like that means like if something goes wrong, it doesn't roll back gracefully. Like if some fatal error comes up, then instead of grac gracefully rolling back, it it um, it just dies and leaves your infrastructure running and like it leaves the state file in a messed up state it doesn't clean up the asset as well it happened to me a couple of times yeah so you need to be careful about that this is where the depends on attribute comes comes to the play it's better to explicitly define dependencies rather than assume also um, terraform errors are self-explanatory i don't think uh it's a i don't think they are they are quite helpful as in it says it might have happened, but they don't uh, explicit, explicitly say a, like what is actually the error and how can you actually fix it. So yeah, I felt these are the things that even if advertised in the industry, I don't think it does that properly. A couple of gotchas um, faced while working with Terraform where I get the issue where my machine was not able to resolve it of this domain uh, this is generally this is generally dns issue so if you change your dns like dns provider sorry dns address to public dns such as one one quad one or quad eight then it should be working uh, you you could get error sometimes called fail to validate provider configuration uh, generally this happens when there is a specific bug in provider you know to get past this just remove the provider and use the provider that actually works this how happens when you are using third-party providers also talking about third-party providers um third the version of third-party provider are not inherited in nested modules or sub modules so if i'm using provider other like providers or like which were provided other than by other than HashiCorp, then the version numbers are not inherited. So you need to explicitly define provider version number in each sub module if you are using third party provider. So yeah, these are the links to some, some learning resource. If you are new to Terraform, I've created a couple of resources on beginners, resource on Terraform on how to build an infrastructure in AWS. So have a look through it. And that's all for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. And please leave a, co leave a comment if you felt anything was missing or if, if, if there is anything else we could add into this lesson learned. I'm keen to hear if uh, there are other things that are not talked in this slide, but you felt were, were some gotchas with Terraform. Uh, 
Thank you. Bye-bye.